This is Valley News Live at 10. Women will die because this won't stop the process of abortion. It will stop safety. Good evening, everyone. All across the country today, groups of people protested the potential end to a nationwide right to abortion. This comes after last night, Politico leaked a Supreme Court draft majority opinion that would overturn both Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Today, Justice Roberts confirmed that draft document is authentic, though he said he does not know how it got out. Now in Fargo, more than 100 pro-choice advocates showed up to the federal courthouse downtown this evening. The advocates want women to know abortion is still legal for now everywhere. The Supreme Court still has not made their final ruling. And even if they do rule to overturn Roe v. Wade, that would give the power to decide the legality of abortion, including under what terms it's legal, back to individual states. And those laws could vary widely. Nationwide, both the number and rate of abortions has fallen over the last few decades, but they're still more common than many people realize. One Minnesota woman is sharing her personal experience with the issue. Emily Richter is her name. She had an elective abortion during her first pregnancy back in 2020 after her daughter was diagnosed with a rare fatal birth defect during an ultrasound. Kate Raddatz shares her story. Emily Richter and her husband Bryce couldn't wait to see their baby during her anatomy scan. We were excited. We were we were first time parents. We were excited to find out um, that she was a girl. I knew like I had this feeling that she was a girl and she was a girl. But during that routine appointment on March 13th of 2020, their lives changed forever. You could see the tech. Um, she was she was quiet. She was suddenly quiet in her affect had changed and and then they got to her head and she turned the whole machine off and she said I need to go get your OB. Emily's daughter was diagnosed with a serious birth defect called anencephaly, which causes a baby to grow without parts of the brain and skull. Babies with the condition are stillborn or die shortly after birth. There was also a hole in this baby's heart. Emily was 19 weeks pregnant. We were devastated. It was the worst. I mean, it was the worst news we could have gotten. It's still the worst news we've received in our lives. Emily's life was also at risk. Because of the severity of our case, um, the my amniotic fluid was on the verge of sepsis. Emily made the painful decision to terminate the pregnancy she had so badly wanted. She was still my baby, and I carried her for almost 20 weeks by the time um, my procedure could be scheduled. Emily went on to get pregnant again, and the couple now has a one-year-old boy. She shares her story with the hope others understand the different reasons someone may have an abortion. Removing access to this type of care is uh, is devastating for a lot of women, for any for any birthing body. Honestly, this this could be anyone. Emily says she worries about women who may not have the resources to travel to another state for access to an abortion if Roe v. Wade is overturned. All right, switching gears now, flooding in the valley remains uh, a tumultuous situation. More rain in the forecast this weekend, but some nice days ahead of that. Here's First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson with details. Hutch. Justin, thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. And yes, indeed, we do have some good news in the fact that a nice long stretch of dry days, warm weather to allow our rivers to well, work their way through. As we take a look at a photo shared the other day in the Nechi area, landlocked Highway 18 shut off by water and that Pembina River at Nechi remains very high and is expected to stay and hover in that same area over the next few days. And that's been a trouble spot today. Another one, the Tamarack River out there in the Stephen area of western parts of Marshall County right here that joins the Red River off in the distance on the tree line way out there. Thanks so much, Jeff, for sharing this. The high waters there as well. Still a problem that's not far from Oslo that's expected to stay very high and just be low record at levels all the way through the week and into the upcoming weekend. So a couple trouble spots on the Red River we and the Cheyenne River where you see the purples here, major flooding. Heading up north today where the hot spots were, we did have a couple of areas just in this region here that did see some problems on dams. The Burbani River releases water into the Tongue and the Renwick Dam that both had problems and the National Guard was there to really assist things and keep things from getting out of proportion. But all that water works its way into the Pembina area 
and that area remains very high and will continue to rise as we go through the upcoming week to not far from record stage there as well. So a wet week ahead, the dry weather is welcome. As we look at that Cheyenne River, Kindred, the trouble spot, you're just crossing up into that area of major flood stage. We'll keep on top of all of the water levels. We do have some dry weather to go through, but the weekend brings a chance of rain. I'll have the highlights in a minute. All right, thanks, Hutch. Well, tonight, Pembina County officials confirm water breached that Burbany Dam, and it was beginning to fail before members of the North Dakota National Guard stepped in and helped plug it today with the help of helicopters and sandbags. This is near Cavalier. Officials also say roads leading up to the dam became too difficult for large, large equipment to pass through, and without the quick action of the National Guard, there could have been a ripple effect on nearby communities. It could have... Uh, compromise the Herzog Dam and then if that one went then we would we'd have some problems. That sandbagging effort will continue throughout the day tomorrow. Crews will remain in place all night to monitor the dam for any changes. New developments on a lawsuit filed today against Jack Glosser of Glosser Images. Attorney General Drew Wrigley filing that civil action. Glosser suddenly closed his studio back in October. The Attorney General's office says they received more than 500 complaints during a consumer fraud investigation into the company. Uh, Attorney General Wrigley says Glosser falsely blamed the closure on the pandemic, then continued to borrow money while enjoying a luxurious lifestyle. Tonight, Glosser's attorney countered, saying, quote, we maintain this is a failed business and not an elaborate conspiracy, end quote. Clay County officials are reporting the fourth significant fentanyl seizure just since March. According to police, it happened around 1 a.m. Sunday when an officer saw a vehicle hit the median on 20th Street near Belsley Boulevard. According to police, they pulled the car over and the driver gave a fake name. When police searched the car, they found 300 suspected M30 fentanyl pills worth more than $10,000. Shenanda Fleming and Abraham Johnson are now facing multiple charges. Meanwhile, Moorhead police announced they collected about 111 pounds of unused medications on Saturday during their National Take Back Day event. They say they collected an additional 216 pounds of unused medication since the last National Take Back event in October. October. Those 327 pounds of meds will be turned over to the DEA office in Fargo to be burned at an EPA certified incinerator. U.S. officials say Russian President Vladimir Putin could formally declare war on Ukraine as soon as May 9th next week, known as Victory Day in Russia. The country, of course, has been invading Ukraine for about two months now, but declaring war officially could at least theoretically unleash Russia's full military power and reserves as their current operation there continues to falter. An Air Force veteran from Moorhead who left for Ukraine last month says he plans to stay there now for at least the rest of this year. Mark Lindquist has been helping the fight for Ukraine for again about a month now, starting with humanitarian efforts at refugee camps. Now he and his team have redirected their focus to bombed out towns on the eastern side of the country. They've started a second headquarters in Kyiv. He says they plan to get essential items off warehouse shelves and directly to the people who need them. You got to identify the problems and then you got to solve it. And the problems really are that the red tape uh, in doing good is quite uh, significant out here. Um, and some of the wrong thing or some of the right things are in the wrong places, being stockpiled in warehouses. Things that are desperately needed out east are not getting to those people. Linquist GoFundMe account reached his goal of $50,000 just in the first month. He says his goal now is to double that by the end of May. There's a link to that on our website, valleynewslive.com. Well, stay right where you are. Still to come, an emotional story of a group of local veterans and their last mail call. And after one of the wettest Aprils on record at Grand Forks, it was so a wet record setting April. Well, we've got some warm days ahead. The boys of summer are happy outside playing baseball, softball, maybe some golf. But rain is in the forecast. I'll have the latest coming up. Join me, Weather's Nice.